want to share how I made my own pepperoni from scratch and put it on a pizza. I've made other types of charcuterie before, but this was my first time making a fast fermented sausage. My pepperoni has both pork and beef. I'm using baker's percentages to describe the ingredient amounts where my total meat is my 100%. So we have 65% pork shoulder, 25% beef top sirloin, which is pretty lean and relatively cheap. And then we have 10% pork fat back, which is the fat from the pig's back, which is the hardest fat on the pig compared to something like belly fat that's a lot softer. Next, our critical safety ingredients are 2.3% salt, 0.25% prog powder number one, the flavor of Italy starter culture, and 0.75% dextrose to feed the culture. These ingredients protect the sausage from pathogens while it ages. It's really important to use the correct cure because this sausage is going to age for less than 30 days. We're using prog powder number one. If we were aging our pepperoni for a longer amount of time, say a couple months like a traditional salami, then we would use prog powder number two. Finally, we have our spices, 0.3% black pepper, 0.1% white pepper, 1% smoked paprika, 0.5% cayenne, and 0.3% fennel seed. First, we sterilize our equipment. We want to make extra sure we aren't introducing any unwanted pathogens to the pepperoni. I'm using star sand that I got from a home brewing store, but any food safe sanitizer should work. Next, we need to weigh out our meat and cut it into small enough cubes that we can feed directly into the grinder. Then we transfer our meat along with our grinder and sausage stuffer parts to the freezer for about an hour. Keeping everything really cold before use will help us get a really good grind on the meat and help prevent the meat from coming up to danger zone temperatures before we're ready to start fermentation. In the meantime, we can measure out and prep our spices, salt cure, and dextrose. I like using whole spices and grinding them myself with a spice grinder when I can to get the freshest flavor. Next, we need to wake up our starter culture. Different cultures have different instructions, so make sure to follow the directions on the package. When the meat in the freezer is stiff, but not frozen solid, we can start grinding it. I'm using a plate with relatively small holes to get a fairly fine grind. The ground meat is going into a bowl that's sitting in an ice bath to make sure the meat stays cold. If the meat is warming up and getting closer to the danger zone, you can transfer it back to the freezer for 20 minutes until it's nice and cold again. Then we use the paddle attachment on our mixer to combine the meat, culture, and spices. This amount of meat was a little too much for my mixer, so I had to work in batches. Now we're ready to begin stuffing. Pack the meat tightly into the cold sausage stuffer. Get the casings onto the stuffer's nozzle. I'm using natural casings, and these have been sitting in warm water to prep for stuffing. I recommend using natural casings for pepperoni because they tighten up when heated, which helps us get that nice cupping effect that we're looking for on top of the pizza. Kenji has an excellent Serious Eats article digging into why pepperoni cups. I'll put a link in the video description. Let's start stuffing. Don't throw away that last little bit of meat in the nozzle when we're done stuffing. We're going to use that to test the pH after fermentation so that we don't have to cut open a sausage. The flavor of Italy starter culture should be fermented at 75 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 to 35 degrees Celsius in a 90% relative humidity environment for 18 to 36 hours. We can create such an environment by wrapping our pepperoni in cling film and keeping it in the oven with the oven light on. I fermented this batch of pepperoni for almost exactly 24 hours. Our target pH is anything below 5.2 and we got 4.5, so that's a successful ferment. Now we need to age the pepperoni for a week or two until we reach 20% weight loss. I weigh each sausage and label it with its initial and target weights, then hang them in my charcuterie chamber. My chamber is a converted wine fridge with a couple of inkbird controllers to maintain humidity and temperature. 
It's set to 80% humidity and 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. Ten days later, I've actually shot past my target 20% weight loss and reached closer to 30%. That's completely fine, it'll just be a little bit stiffer. The final step before the pepperoni is ready is to gently cook it. I'm cooking these sous vide at 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius for three hours. Okay, we have some pepperoni, now we need to make some pizza. Fire up the pizza oven early, about half an hour before the pizza bakes, to saturate the stone with heat. I'm not doing Neapolitan style, so I have the flame on medium rather than high. Meanwhile, cut the pepperoni into medium thick slices, about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters thick. This dough is naturally leavened with my sourdough starter. It's 80% King Arthur bread flour, 15% home milled Maris Widgeon heritage wheat, and 5% whole rye flour. It has 72% hydration, 3% olive oil, and was inoculated with 5% Levain. It's been cold proofing in the fridge for two days and then warming up on the counter for about three hours now. Tomato sauce. This batch has a little garlic, crushed red chili peppers, and a small splash of fish sauce for added depth. Low moisture whole milk mozzarella. Not too much, we don't want to go overboard. And finally, our pepperoni. It's going to be pretty generous with it because it is the star of the show after all. Transfer the pizza to the peel. Our stone temperature is about 725 degrees Fahrenheit, or 385 degrees Celsius, which is perfect, so let's launch the pizza. I like to turn the flame down to its lowest setting after launching. Rotate the pizza as the crust browns. This ended up being almost exactly a seven minute bake. We got beautiful color on the pepperoni. Decent cupping too. Nice little pools of grease. Pretty good bake on this pizza. Good browning on the crust. Nicely spotted brown bottom. great oven rise and a super airy crumb inside the rim. Now let's taste it. There's that crumb again. The pepperoni turned out wonderfully. I was unsure if I would get that classic pepperoni flavor or just a delicious sausage but not really pepperoni flavor. This is definitely pepperoni. It has that tanginess a little spice, and a bit of smokiness. Absolutely delicious. Super good with some hot honey too. I hope you give this homemade pepperoni a try. If you want to get into sausage and salami making yourself, definitely check out the Two Guys in a Cooler channel. I also highly recommend the book The Art of Making Fermented Sausages by the Mariansky Brothers. Thanks for watching.